Vámonos. I'm here. No, your eyes do not deceive you. Desperados is back. Desperados 3 takes us back to a simpler time, when tiny people walked around tiny towns, and baddies had giant green triangles bursting out of their eyes. Even better, this new installment is in the hands of Mimi Me, who gave us the outstanding real-time stealth strategy of Shadow Tactics. They're swapping ninjas for cowboys, and it looks like an excellent fit. Rock, paper, Shotgun got to see a walkthrough of one of the new levels from an alpha build, the final game is due in 2019, so I'm going to pick out the ways it's keeping the Desperados heritage alive, and the ways it is improving on it. If you're enjoying this video as it goes along, please do think about subscribing, I'm not going to hold you at gunpoint like an evil bandit if you don't. Let's saddle up and head for the frontier. Not your lucky day, is it? That's one. If you're completely new to Desperados, the game is basically about getting cowboys into places where cowboys aren't welcome. This means sneaking and quietly stabbing nasty cowboys, and I'll go into that in a second. The biggest change to the formula in Desperados 3 is the introduction of areas where our heroes are welcome. The team are calling these civil zones. These are large social areas where you're free to explore and drink in the atmosphere without the fear of someone putting a tiny bullet between your tiny eyes. The thing it's most like is a Hitman level, in the way that you mingle with non-hostile NPCs and hear snippets of dialogue that pad out the story or hint at ways that you might achieve your goals. This is outrageous! You can't just tear down my house! Company orders. Tracks gotta go through here. The Hitman comparison is helped a tiny bit by the fact that the mission I saw is all about assassinating a series of villains who are after one of the playable characters. There's a brothel owner who is exploiting the girls and their customers, a group of bootleggers who are making trouble at the church, never a good idea in a western, and an evil foreman forcing his railroad tracks through the town. Personally, I would let him build his railroad, as it would mean fewer houses I'd have to sneak into, but that's not really the spirit of the game. The areas you can't go into are clearly marked by the big red lines, but as in Hitman, guards will give you a polite warning before firing on you. As long as you don't attack anyone or carry a body, you're pretty safe in the civil zone. It's already a really nice change of pace to walk around and drink in all the tiny details. It's like being in a model village version of Westworld. And the game's creative director, Dominic Arbe, says it offers a more tactical depth as you can choose which angle to attack enemy compounds from. He also tells me that there's a later level set in a large city, which increases the scale even beyond what you're seeing here. If you like losing yourself in a map for hours on end, and who doesn't, I think you'll be very happy. The lady. All right. If the world feels a bit like a Hitman level, it kind of works like one too. You're free to tackle your hit list with knives and guns, or this massive axe if you really hate the guy. <laughs> there goes that. But there are also environmental kills which are straight out of the Agent 47 playbook. We're told that this local harasser likes to show off by riding his bull, and that his bull can be manipulated to ensure that the rodeo is short-lived. Elsewhere in the town, we hear a conversation about how a local man got killed by a falling wall, and wouldn't it be bad if that were to happen again? I didn't say it was subtle. For the purposes of this demo, we're introduced to Wild Marge, who is safely tucked away in a brothel. Now, if only there was a nearby NPC talking at the top of their voice. She's making me crazy. Part of me just wants to pack up and leave. I went through her draw yesterday. Did you know she keeps lodging them there? Don't tell me you got a taste for that stuff. Oh, of course not. I just wondered who we got this from. You know, Doc Harold, sometimes when he can't pay, he brings a bottle from his stash. No, really? So not only is there a regular delivery of poisonous laudanum, but Marge is also partial to whiskey from the cellar. I don't need a bald head and a tie to work out where this is going. Of course, getting the poison into her drink supply still requires some fancy playing. The doctor's medicine is hidden away inside the brothel and requires you to scale the balcony before dealing with two guards at the same time. Luckily for our demonstrator, he knows the precise five second window to do it in. Then you've got to get to the booze, which is better defended than anything in town, and it is booze after all. But what I like about this is it offers quite a fun cinematic approach, 
may be one that will appeal to people who are newer to the genre and struggle more to formulate perfect stealth plans. It gives you a ready-made western film plot for you to kind of slot yourself into, and if you don't want to have your hand held, you can ignore all that and systematically pick off every guard one by one. And even better, if you play on a higher difficulty mode, there will actually be more guards, making the whole thing a whole lot tougher. I should also add, not every mission in the game is based on assassinations. Dominic mentions a level where you have to defend a location, and another where you break out of prison, so you'll still be getting a good mix of classic western tropes. If you've played any of the previous games, you'll already recognise John Cooper, the knife-flinging star of the series. He's still heading up the gang here, but with a slightly tweaked set of moves. You see, in Desperados, each character has weapons and abilities unique to them, and his are still built around his trusty throwing knife. He's really good at lobbing that thing. I couldn't throw a tennis ball that far, let alone with enough speed to go through someone's head. I also really like the knife death animations, which kind of have a touch of hammy acting about them. And the Oscar for most drawn out death goes to... Hoodlum number 5! Well done, sir. Good. He's also gained a coin toss, which is another trick the game borrows from Hitman, and it works exactly as it did there, drawing guards from patrol routes or opening up new routes to a nearby bush. It's sad to lose the musical watch from the earlier games, that would let you set a time on your distraction for extra tactical nuance, but no stealth hero in 2018 is complete without a very noisy penny. He's joined in this demo by a new character, Hector. His deal is laying down massive bear traps and then whistling to draw helpless guards into their jaws. It's a very bloody death. Would to be that guy. See? The old girl hasn't let me down yet. His whistle works much like the audio distractions in the earlier games, in that you have to carefully position the sound bubble to only reach the ears of the people you want to lure in. He's also much stronger than Cooper, which lets him carry two bodies at once, much like Sanchez in the first game, and he can also enter into melee combat with these new elite brute units. These giant men have armour, which means Cooper's knife attacks tend to end something like this. So it's better to wade in with Hector's axe instead. Outside of Hector and Cooper, I'm intrigued to see which old faces return. I'd love to see Doc McCoy with his balloon lifted gas bombs, but Dominic does hint at one all new character who brings what he calls a big leap in the rules, and will act like a cool layer of gameplay. I hope it's a playable tumbleweed. I'd just love to roll around all day long. A man can dream, right? Yeah, I got it. Whatever characters are yet to come, you'll never have more than five in play, and me, me, me are keen to push the idea of mixing their skills in interesting combinations to find new solutions to problems. Character skills are meant to complement each other. The obvious example is using Hector's whistle to lure enemies in front of Cooper's throwing knife. The synchronised moves were possible in the original Desperados 2, thanks to quick actions that let you program one move in advance into each hero, something Mi 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 used themselves in Shadow Tactics Shadow Mode. In Desperados 3, it will be known as Showdown Mode, and although we aren't shown it in action, Dominic says it'll be more advanced than their previous system. It'll be interesting to see if that means we can add multiple moves per character, or maybe include an element of timing so that you can set up more elaborate chains of events. Dominic does says you shouldn't expect to automate everything. This is a real-time tactics game after all, and reacting to events and executing your plans are part of the skill of playing. Leave the big guy to me. He got you once already. Here's a question. How do you make guns stealthy? The series has always struggled a bit to work out when noisy weapons fit into sneaking action. In the past, they're a bit of a last resort and could feel messy and unsatisfying. I remember hiding at the top of ladders in the first game and just shooting people as they climbed up, but it was either that or go down in a hail of bullets. But Dominic feels guns have a role to play in Desperados 3's sneaky action. He says it still counts as stealth if everyone's dead at the end which is a fair point, but if you are going to start pulling the trigger, do make sure everyone is dead by the end. And so each gun has a really distinct feel and performance, to make sure you know exactly how it'll operate as a tool. Cooper's pistol has a double shot, letting him tackle two targets. Hector's shotgun on the other hand has spread and will kill anyone inside its targeting area, what the team jokingly refer to as the cone of death. As you can see here, it has a role to play in stealth in the way it wipes out two guards that would otherwise need splitting up. 
challenge is managing the sound, but even here the rules are really clear and simple, with the interface clearly showing the range of sound beyond the range of bullets. You have to be careful where and when to use these big noisy weapons then, but don't think that they are just here for when the horse manure hits the fan. All the larger changes I've talked about are supported by a level of polish and expertise that comes with the passing of time. It's been nearly 10 years since we last joined John Cooper and Friends, that was in 2009's Hell Dorado, which was sort of a sequel and sort of not very good. Things have changed since then. For one, Mimi Me gave Real Time Tactics a brilliant facelift in Shadow Tactics, and much of that learning is applied here. If you've spent any time guiding their microscopic ninjas towards exposed threats, Ropes, you'll recognise the basics of the interface, and how smoothly it communicates everything. As in the older Desperados, it's still about sneaking around enemy cones of vision and placing distractions, but the cones are easier to read. You'll get spotted in the bright segment, but can safely crouch in the darker zone. Stand in the darker zone and it fills up, eventually triggering an alarm. How much time you have to drop down to safety is decided by what difficulty you play on. Then there are little things you take for granted, like having a full 360 degrees of camera control, meaning you aren't trying to navigate the static art of the original game. Ok, you could do this in Desperados too, but the art is much more attractive and impressive to spin and poke at here. Then there's the amount of dialogue. The characters are constantly joking with each other and offering commentary on the events they find. This place reminds me of the one in Deadwood. There's lots of whorehouses in Deadwood. The original Desperados was a very characterful game, a sort of friendlier version of the military gruffness of commandos behind enemy lines. That talkative side is a lot richer and fuller here, and even though this particular level is quite traditional western fare, all dusty streets and saloons, Dominic says that they have tried to fold in a more contemporary western style too, where there's a bit more greenery and it's all a bit more livable. I like my spaghetti westerns, but it'll be good to have some vegetables to go with the pasta. And that's my quick tour of Desperados 3, a game that has already shot up my most wanted list, a bit annoying as it's still a year away from release. It's such a good match of studio and series, Shadow Tactics was a love letter to real time tactical stealth, and it's great to see all that love poured into a series that kinda needed a bit more care and attention. If you have any more questions about what I saw in the demo, ask away in the comments. And if you like this preview, why not subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our future Desperados videos, and we will We'll be doing as many as we can. If you do subscribe please activate the notification bell so that our new videos actually get to you, otherwise it's a bit like entering a quick draw contest with an empty gun, no good will come of it. Thanks for watching Rock Paper Shotgun and we'll hopefully see you soon, bye for now!